Uh-huh, what? Did you know that Kia has a recall that will replace the engine in your vehicle? Huh, that's interesting. For free? What? I gotta go. What? Why? Look, if they're handing out free engines for Kias and I need an engine for my Kia, then I'm going. Because you never know, they might not last. I'm going. But wait! That's not how it works. Look, I debated a while before deciding to do a video on this topic because there's so much controversy. People are angry. You know, why? Why is everybody angry? You know, I mean, I get it. I understand. I understand both sides. Look, I understand. If you need an engine for your vehicle and you are denied an engine, I understand how you feel. On the other hand, I understand if you need an engine for your vehicle and it was denied because you didn't do proper maintenance, I understand that too. <laughs> Look, we're not here to debate some kind of controversy. Controversy. Anyway, what I want to show you is what technicians have to actually go through to get this engine covered under warranty for the customer. Because when it gets right down to it, technicians, I mean, they want to get paid. And if it's the, the engine's denied, then they don't get paid. So, so I'm going to show you all of the cutting through hoops and jumping red tape that technicians have to do to get this done. But first, I want to introduce you to the vehicle that we're going to be diagnosing. <laughs> oh no. This is a 2014 Kia Soul PS. And this is a two liter NU engine. What does the PS and the NU mean? Well, we'll get to that in a little bit. But the customer came in complaining about the check engine light coming on and the check engine light blinking. They didn't complain about anything else, only that. But this vehicle doesn't need an engine. And it was towed in. That's important too. And I'm gonna go ahead and start this engine up and you can hear what I heard when I first started this engine. So let's get in here and start it up. I'm gonna start it up. And it has 107,000 miles on it. And you can see the check engine light there is blinking too. You can, you can hear it, it's knocking, right? Engine is knocking, it's knocking pretty bad. It sounds, sounds like it's got a rod about, about to come loose. So that's what we're dealing with and I'm gonna get into the why and how and what we need to do to get this engine covered under warranty for this customer. Whenever a recall comes up, it seems if it's something that has to do with the supplier, then Kia states, due to something from the supplier, this has happened. And as far as I know, the supplier for Kia is Hyundai, or Hyundai, 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 anyway. And Hyundai seems to have their hands in everything now. I mean, 
They have their own ships, their own cargo ships. I mean, look it up. They, own, they got their own cargo ships, Hyundai. So these engines come from Hyundai. Hyundai is the supplier for these engines for Kia. And from what the Google web says, and that's the only place that I can find information because Kia doesn't come out and just tell us the information as to what happened and why and how and stuff like that. Back in May of 2017, a class action lawsuit, one of two class action lawsuits were filed against Hyundai Kia for this engine issue. So this first one started back in May of 2017. Now in June of 2017, this recall came out. This was the first recall as the SC-147. All technician, Kia technicians know SC-147. It is the first engine recall and it is a recall. So we should get this straight first. A recall is a recall. Okay, it's not a warranty extension. It is a recall. When a recall is on your vehicle or anything for that matter, if uh, it's uh, some food that you bought at the grocery store, you got a recall, you got to take it back. If your baby's crib got a recall because it's dangerous or something, you got to take it back. Or they'll supply you with the free parts that you can put on to make it safe. It's the same way with automobiles. If there's a recall, they don't expire. Recalls do not expire. They have to be done. They have to be done. This recall came out in June of 2017. It has been revised 14 times and I cannot go back and look at the other you know, before the revisions, I can only see what is current now. So back in uh, January 29th of 2021, it was revised for the last time, which was its 14th time. Okay, so it's been revised many times. And what this recall deals with, and you can see that it's a 2011-14 Optima QF TF, 2012-14 Sorento XMA, 2011 to 13 Sportage SL. Okay, this was the beginning. This was the beginning of it. And this uh, shows more of a breakdown of each of the vehicles. Uh, and it talks about the vehicle equipped with the 2.4 liter gasoline direct injection engine and also the uh, 2.4 liter and the 2 liter uh, turbocharged direct injection and uh, the same thing with the Sorento and the Sportage. It's the 2.4 liter and the 2 liter turbo. Okay, this is the why. This is the only why that I have been able to find. Uh, metal, metal debris may have been generated from factory machining operations of the engine crankshaft and may not have been completely removed from the crankshaft oil passages during the cleaning process. It was also determined that the additional machining processes of the crank pin may have been may have caused uneven surface roughness these combined conditions can restrict oil flow to the bearings and increase the potential for premature bearing wear this goes on to the next page and it says a worn uh, connecting rod will produce a psychedelic knocking noise from the engine and may also result in the illumination of the vehicle's engine warning and an oil pressure lamp on the instrument panel. If the warning, warnings are ignored and the vehicle is continued to be driven, the bearing may fail and the vehicle could stall while in motion and engine stalling at higher speeds can result in a risk of a crash. It then goes on to say to follow the procedures in this bulletin to inspect the vehicle to see if it has any kind of malfunction like a worn out connecting rod bearing or something like that. So um, it went into these procedures. Now, this is the first procedure that they came up with. And this is really dusty. This thing right here, this is a microphone there's actually a microphone in this end and this is a tube and there's a hole in the end 
right there. I don't know if you can see that. And this goes down into the dipstick. You pull the dipstick out and this goes into the dipstick tube. And then there's a wire that you hook onto here and it goes to your diagnostic tester. And it goes through a certain process where it tells the technician to rev the engine up to um, 3,000 RPMs for a little bit and then bring it down to 2,000 and 1,500 or something like that. And all the while it's listening, you know, it's listening to see if it hears a knocking noise. That was the first inspection of the SC-147. If you found out that it heard something, even if you couldn't hear it, if it heard a knocking noise, then the bulletin would tell you replace the engine and that's it. And we would just get a new engine and put it in there and it was a long block engine. This was the second part. So this is not a recall. Okay, this is more towards a um, warranty extension, um, uh, something like that. But this deals with the same vehicles um, and this came out in November of 2018. It has been revised five times, uh, last time in, in uh, 2019. Um, okay, and it's a PI 1803WX. So if you look at this, this is superseded by, by PI 1803YZ. So why am I showing this to you? You can't see it, but it's basically the same vehicles underneath here that pertain to it, the two liter turbo and the 2.4 liter. And whenever we go to the other side, these are labor ops for performing uh, various uh, things on the vehicle. And um, one thing that uh, it shows right here is an extension harness install. Where that extension harness install thing comes from is the second phase or the second part of it is you would hook up the scanner and it would use the knock sensor to determine if it can hear a knock from the engine. I mean, it makes sense. Knock sensors, they hear knock on the engine and they usually retard your timing to take away from pre-ignition and stuff like that. That's what they're for. But they're using it to determine if the knock in the engine could be caused by a bearing going out. That was the second part. And it had some issues because sometimes it would hear a knock when there was no knock. Uh, sometimes it would uh, tell you that the harness might be bad or the knock sensor is bad or something like that. And we were installing these harnesses, basically cutting out the part, the circuits that go to the knock sensor from the PCM and installing a new harness. And that it just didn't go over that well, but you know, if that system said that the engine was knocking, then you know, you replace the engine. Of course, vehicles were coming in and engines were knocking and we could hear them. We knew they needed uh, engines replaced. It could still tell if an engine had a bearing that was starting to go out that maybe we couldn't hear. And so then we would just be putting engines in them. This is, uh, a, another bulletin, this is the PI-1803. Now, this bulletin came out in November of 2018. It's basically for the same vehicles. And what this is, is a uh, logic improvement in which we are installing a knock sensor detection system. So we're putting a knock sensor detection system in the vehicle. And what a knock sensor detection system does is it's a program that you install into the PCM and it's always checking for excessive amount of knock using the knock sensor of the vehicle. So it's using the knock sensor that's already on the engine and it detects to see if there's excessive amount of knock, the amount of knock that could come from a, a rod bearing going out. And what it will do is if it detects that, then it'll set a code. The code is P1326. And that code never existed until we installed the knock sensor detection system. And all the vehicles got them. It is a recall. A PI-1803 is what they call a product improvement campaign. Now, when they first came out with it, people would come in and get it done and, and customers got letters saying that they needed this uh, done although they didn't treat it as much of a recall as just a product improvement, but it was 
a recall and it was determined to be a recall uh, later on because it turns out that if you didn't have the KSCS logic improvement on your vehicle then you could be denied an engine possibly there was a certain time which uh, in which they waived that so if the customer didn't have the KSCS logic improvement on their vehicle and they did have an engine that was going out engines were getting approved and approved and approved for a certain amount of time and I cannot remember that time and of course that documentation is gone now but there was a certain amount of time that it was being waived until a certain time and then it's that's it you have to have it and I'm guessing that has to do something with the a second filing of a um, the lawsuit against uh, Hyundai Kia. In this PI-1803 campaign, this is a little flowchart right here. And the first thing it says is the SE-147 campaign, has it been completed? So if it has not been completed, then you need to do the SE-147 first because uh, that is the most important thing. It needs to get done. If it has this recall, it needs to get done. And if the inspection, uh, the recall, if it failed, um, then uh, you got to perform the SE-147 procedure, which was to replace the engine. No question about it, replace the engine. If uh, it has been completed, then you perform the PI-1803, um, and depending on uh, which vehicle it is, depends on what you do, but it's basically a KSDS ECU logic improvement. And if the vehicle returns with a P1326, that's the code that it was set if it has an issue, then you perform the PI1803YZ recall or bulletin. Okay, this is the third phase or the third part of performing diagnostics on these engines and I'll get you in here and I'll show you what this tool is okay this is a bearing clearance tester this piece right here it has a thing on the end right there it pushes down so this goes into your spark plug hole and on the end of this other side it has this dial indicator or this is a digital indicator rather that will show you how much movement there is and of course we got something to turn the crankshaft and this device right here actually supplies air or vacuum to the cylinder through this hose down into this thing right here and it basically what it does is it it pushes the piston down and then it sucks the piston up and in checking the amount of movement in that piston up and down you can determine how much wear the the crankshaft or the rod bearing has and this is how they would uh, check the bearing clearance test it's a really really neat design it's a it's really cool I'm surprised nobody ever thought of it before. Or maybe they did. I, I just, I've never seen it. But um, it's a really cool device, and we're going to be using this on this um, Kia Soul, and I'll show you how it works. But first, let's get more back into the why. Okay, this is the bulletin for PI. <clears throat> What's that? PI 1803YZ. Um, this is for when the vehicle comes back after doing the KSDS logic improvement and you have a 1326 set and what happens is What happens is whenever that KSDS logic improvement sets whenever it determines that the engine is knocking due to bearing clearance issues it will go into limp mode the check engine light will blink It'll come on and it'll blink. It'll set a code P1326 and you'll have limited amount of power now it's not that limited you can actually get up to 60 65 miles an hour on the highway but it's just very slow going and what happens is it'll come in and it'll have that code and when it has this code P1326 this is the bulletin will follow and of course these are all the same vehicles that we've been talking about for the PI 1803 YZ and then you have this flowchart that you have to go to 
And I should let you know that this has been revised seven times. The last time it was revised was um, March of 2024. And so they're breaking down and breaking down on uh, things that we do and what we look at. And uh, so uh, there's all kinds of stuff you have to do. You got to validate warranty, uh, confirm the customer's complaint is on the list, uh, listed in the RO. Uh, noted on the RO, the vehicle was towed in. Um, that's important that it's noted on the RO. Uh, validate the ownership. We have to indicate the, um, the, the um, initiated tech line case if the vehicle has a salvage title or belongs to a used car dealer, uh, franchise, or auto auction. Um, so is uh, KSDS installed or DTC 1326 set? It couldn't set 1326 if the KSDS wasn't installed. So if it was, then we need to um, check the oil dipstick, the oil cap, oil filler, um, opening inspection. We have to take pictures of each of those things and we have to take a video showing the VIN on the vehicle and these things, so, uh, we're not allowed to get away with anything. We have to show them that this is the same vehicle and this is what it looks like. And they wanna look and see if the vehicle has been maintained properly. And so if anything, if everything is okay, then you refer to the application flow charts, A, B, or C, depending on if the vehicle came in just for 1326 stored, or did it come in because it had engine noise, or did it come in because it can't crank because the engine's locked up. Okay, so. <clears throat> Going on to the next flow chart, so this is uh, flow chart B, engine noise. So if you came in for engine noise, you've done all that other stuff, everything's fine, then you're going to uh, do a full scan of the uh, vehicle and generate a VDN. The VDN is a vehicle diagnostic number that has to be generated and that will go up to the cloud and they can see what you see in your scanner, basically. And then you need to perform the bearing clearance test and we're gonna do that with the bearing clearance tester. Then uh, bearing clearance test result, did it pass? Well, if it passed, then uh, is there connecting rod noise? You know, yes, if there is, then there's a PWA process, okay? If it didn't pass, then there's a PWA process. Okay, so what is a PWA process? Well, PWA stands for Prior Warranty Authorization. It means that we have to get authorization from Kia before we can do anything with the vehicle. Even if it says, if you go back to that, that um, SC-147 recall, if it didn't pass a bearing clearance test and it need an engine, you just put an engine in, that's it. But now, even if it doesn't pass a bearing clearance test, even if it has a 1326 set, we still have to contact our Kia tech line and go through a PWA process so we can get authorization to replace the engine, even if everything looks good. If you need an engine for your vehicle, it's not the technician that's gonna decide you need it. It's not the shop foreman. It's not the service manager, it's not the general manager, it's not the dealership. It is Kia. They're the ones that decide. They tell us what to do and then that's what we do. Once you go through the uh, PWA process, then they'll tell you to replace the engine or not, you know? And hopefully they say, yes, replace the engine. And then uh, after replace the engine, then we check for updates. And then if there is an update available, then we do another KSDS logic improvement because they're always updating that and uh, then we just do the software update. And then finally, uh, I wanna look at this. This is PI2002YZ, okay? If the vehicle comes in, has a 1326, all right? This is for these vehicles, Soul AM, Soul PS. So it's a Soul PS with a gamma 1.6 liter, Soul PS with an NU2 liter, that's the one we have. It's a Forte YD, and you got the Optimas, Sportage, another Forte, uh, Sorento. So that's covered under this one. There are very many of them. And in this one, what we're looking at is the vehicle came in and we're gonna check it just to be sure, but I'm pretty sure it has a 1326 stored and the engine is knocking. Now the customer wasn't complaining about a knocking noise, they're complaining about the check engine light blinking. So this is the flow chart that we want to go through. And this is not too much different than the one that we're just looking at. 
right? So we're going to check the oil level. We're going to um, <clears throat> tell you to do a, a full scan. We're going to do a bearing clearance test. Bearing clearance test result. Is it pass or no pass? So right here, this says bearing clearance test no pass. Engine replacement. It says if the bearing clearance test does not pass, then re just replace the engine. But recently, I have heard from our DPSM, which is our district parts and service manager in this district right here, saying that from now on, or coming soon, and my service manager says starting now, every single engine that we do, we need to open a PWA case with TechLine. That's probably what we're going to end up doing with this, and it's going to be up to Kia to decide if we replace this engine. But uh, first, I want to show you uh, information on this vehicle. Okay, this is, uh, this is the vehicle's VIS, our vehicle information sheet is what I call it. And you can see that these right here are service campaigns, service actions, recalls, and all that other stuff that the customer has already done on the vehicle. And this one right here on the top, is a PI2002B, which is a KSDS logic improvement. So they have had it done. Okay, well, we move further on. And there's some other stuff. As a matter of fact, they have this one right here, the SC200PS, which actually was done uh, in February of 2021. And what this is, is uh, a recall in which the customer comes in and we do a bearing clearance test. We check for leaks, oil leaks and fuel leaks, just to make sure everything's all right in the vehicle. And it must have passed because everything was good and I don't see you know, an engine or anything else done on here. This shows uh, information as a 2014 uh, Kia Soul PS. It has 107,118 miles on it. We can even see um, what date that uh, the vehicle was sold and let's see uh, production date whenever it start whenever it was built right here these are warranty extensions and here it is pi2002 2002yz it covers 180 months 150,000 miles and the vehicle right now they're saying that it's in 11 years right and it's got 107,118, it's eligible. Yes, it is. So we can do this process right here. And that is what we're gonna start doing. Okay, let's get this out of here. La da da la da dee da. La da da dee, la da dee da, la da da dee, la da dee da, la da da dee. <sighs> okay, first. Before I do anything else, we need to check codes in this thing. We need to make sure it has a 1326. And um, we need to do a full scan, make sure that we generate a VDN, because that's what Kia needs. And if you've seen uh, any of my Kia videos, I'm sure you've seen this, you've seen the KDS um, being used. And if you haven't, you know, I'll put a link right up here in the corner so uh, you can check out those uh, videos. Uh, let's get this thing checked out. Okay, this is the KDS, Kia Diagnostic System, that we're all too familiar with. And we are going to check codes in every system. So when Kia says you need to uh, generate a VDN and run codes on all systems, that's what they mean, a complete system check. So <clears throat> we, uh, we check codes in engine, transmission, uh, the 
traction control system that is the um, airbag uh, occupancy detection system there's an airbag system air conditioning system it does have an auto uh, AC uh, EPS that's an electronic power steering system TPMS that's a tire pressure monitoring system um, AHLS that's for the uh, auto headlamp system which I'm not sure if this one has IMMO that's a mobilizer system <clears throat> and the smart key SMK smart key. Uh, the next is the CLU, that's a cluster system. Uh, SJB, that's a smart junction box. And the BCM, uh, body control module. Uh, TMU, that's a um, telematics uh, control unit. So let's see what, um, what we got, what, what kind of codes we got here. So right here, this just generated a VDN. So that's the VDN number. And this number will go up into the cloud. It's going to go up in the cloud right now as soon as I hit this OK. Now Kia knows. Kia knows this vehicle and it knows what codes it has. And right here it's showing that I have a code in the pending or history. And that first, first one right there has a P1326. Not signal range performance. That is it. That's the one we're looking for. So we knew, I mean... I knew it was going to have it anyway, you know, I mean, the thing is knocking like crazy. A customer wasn't complaining about it knocking. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they didn't hear it, but um, it definitely, it was, it went into limp mode, had no power and the check engine light was blinking. So this is now saved. So now we can go on and do the bearing clearance test. <sighs> okay. Now I went ahead and uh, saved you all the, the, uh, trouble of watching me take these spark plugs out and all this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is the engine needs to be at top dead center in order to uh, compress air in there and then a vacuum to check this out. So I got this from my compression tester and this is going to make it a little bit easier so I can get it on top dead center uh, on compression. So I stick that in there and I got the, got the Lone Wolf 2000 stuck on here so I can crank the engine over without it starting and see if I can get compression on this yeah and I felt compression right there that's that's all I need I just need to know that it's coming up on compression and then uh, the next step would be to get it up to the very top top dead center and I'm going to turn the crankshaft by using this tool right here I uh, I get that down on the crank bolt to fit it on there. It's meant to go on there, so it should go on, but it's not going on that easy. So let me see if I can flip it over. Okay, come on. Work with me now. What is it doing? Why, why won't it go on? Um, get in there! Okay. Hang on. I need a little bit of persuasion. This shield right here is in the way. Now, taking, and I'm guessing it's this one right here, I'm going to stick that in there, and this is the wrong one. Okay, there's two different sizes depending on exactly which engine you have. Different size spark plugs. Actually, I have to turn this back. Okay, uh, back to this. So I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Uh, one of the things that we need to do first is we need to check for ECU upgrades and see if this has a KSDS logic improvement available because if it does, we need to let Kia know 
and uh, they because they they just want to know everything so I'm going into auto mode going into engine checking the ID this shouldn't take too long I'm not gonna do an ECU upgrade I'm just gonna see if one's available and it says right here the ECU upgrade has already been updated to the current status or whatever so okay that's good we don't have to worry about that so the next thing is we need to do the bearing clearance tests I go down here to uh, special inspections right there and it already knows the vehicle it already has the VIN and it needs to know what the mileage is and the mileage is one zero oh wait nope one zero seven one one nine now and the RO number I have the RO number is what is it one one nine four one 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 nine four one and done with that a uh, bearing clearance measurement that's what we're doing um, everything is here it's been verified I go to next our number of in continue okay wait well, it wants me to verify anyway okay I hit next and this is pretty much uh, going to give me the instructions on everything that I need to do uh, what to do, how to, how to set the machine up, uh, what different tools we use, and how to do all this and that and other thing. Everything's going to be done by this uh, scanner. So I hit next. It's, this is how you basically set the thing up. I've done this, you know, a thousand times. So we we'll just go through all of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all going to get done. Now uh, I need to turn the ignition off and disconnect this VCI and I'm going to hit next. Now, <laughs> now it wants me to check the oil level. Now here's the deal. So most, well most, I don't know things change so much normally we would be doing this bearing clearance test we would check in the be checking the oil would be take we're gonna be taking a picture of the dipstick and um, if it fails the bearing clearance test as a 1326 we just put an engine in it but in this case now we have to contact Kia anyway this uh, one thing that I didn't show you is uh, there's no oil registering on this dipstick um, I don't know why. Uh, I don't know when the customer did their last oil change. I don't know anything about their oil change records or anything like that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to follow through with this. We're going to let Kia know that it failed the bearing clearance test and has a 1326 and then we'll let them decide if they want to ask the questions, does it have oil and stuff. But one thing we're going to do is we're going to be taking a picture of the uh, dipstick because and that's what this that's what this thing wants to do. It wants me to, to tell, tell it what level the oil is in there and take a picture of it. And we'll just see what happens. I'm pulling the dipstick and it's actually showing, I don't know if you can see that, it does show a little bit on the end. So it's not exactly completely gone, but it's right there to the empty mark. And this engine has been sitting for a couple days now actually. Uh, since I last started it. So I'm going to put on there that it is on the low mark because it's low. And it says to take a picture. I got to take a picture of it so they can see what we see. Come on, focus. Okay, it's a fuzzy picture. It's good enough. Next. Okay, so now it's trying to connect to this digital connector here. This digital. Come on. I have to hit reset on this right here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. This thing right here. 
and it is saying to insert the rod in and we've already done that we got the rod so I'll show you how I get this hooked up it's got this uh, meter sitting up here in the top and it's sticking down into this rod and this rod's going into the uh, cylinder right and it's going to touch the top of the uh, piston when the piston comes up this is the air in that here's the air in that hose I haven't hooked on yet that goes to this gentleman bob right here and this has an electrical connection right here that is plugged into the battery so I turn this on and it will give me readings and stuff up here and uh, this uh, AP and VC that's for um, air pressure and vacuum okay so whenever it has me switch back and forth it's going to be supplying air pressure and it's going to be supplying vacuum to push the piston down and pull the piston up so it can see how much um, movement there is there so insert the rod into the cylinder number one and hand tighten that's already done we hit next now it's telling me to to basically it's showing me to, to crank the the thing over so we get this to come up the top that center so I did have it at top that center i like I said I'm getting ahead of myself I had to push it on um, back so now I'm gonna bring it back up to top that center and I'm gonna continue to move this until this thing shows I turn this light off okay so this thing should pretty quickly there it is it's going all the way to the top I'm gonna continue to do it until it taps out at the top and then it's going to start to barely come down five six six thirty two it's it topped out at six thirty two so now it's on the way down turn it just a little bit more till it meets that blue spot right there and then there it turns now it's telling me to stop okay so I can hit the start thing and now it's telling me to go basically through steps and make sure that this thing is set up right. Let me get the air and I got to plug in the air to this thing and we'll get this thing set up. Okay, so I got the air plugged in here. I'm going to go to next. It's basically telling me to do all the stuff I've already done. I've already got all the stuff plugged in. Uh, need to keep the uh, thing uh, AP on AP position and then hit next so on AP right there um, you see that it is at 6 6.25 I'm gonna plug this in okay and it's still at 6.25 so it's on the AP position I'm hitting next and it is recording that it's at 6.25 now it's Saying to go to the VC position, so I'm applying vacuum. Whenever I hit vacuum, we'll see what it does. Okay, it just jumped down to 6.34. So hit next, and it is recording that position. It's going to do this three times. It's going to compare, change the position to AP. So to AP, it's going from 6.34 back to 6.25. Hit next, and I can tell you that. Um, that's not bad. 6.25 to 6.34, not bad at all. We'll go back to VC, back down to 6.34. It's consistent. And that's what they're looking for. Uh, not too much movement and consistency. Uh, change it back to AP, go back to AP, 6.25, hit next. Turn it back to VC, turn it back to VC, it went back to 6.34, it hit next. It just do this over and over and over. It does it three times. Three times both ways. Okay, so now it says take a picture uh, of the test cylinder. So <clears throat> I am going to take a picture. I hit this thing, take a picture. I'm going to be taking a picture of that right there. And that's, well, if you can see that, that's what the picture looks like. So they want to see, was well, it really hooked up? And is it really hooked up to cylinder one? Yes, it is. They don't, they just want to make sure. Okay, so now 
basically I'm gonna go to next and now I'm gonna remove the air hose and I am going to do the same thing on the next cylinder well so the next cylinder isn't number two the next cylinder is number three so it goes one three four two and that's the firing order of this uh engine so we're gonna go one three four two we're gonna check them all just like that so i don't bore the heck out of you cue the heavy metal music Okay, just so you can see what this thing is doing, it's actually at 4.49 right now, all right? And I hit it to AP, I'm gonna hit next. So I wanna show you how far this is moving. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to VC, and you can see it's 4.49. 5.454, that is a lot. I mean, that's like a, a whole, a real lot. That, that, that's a cylinder. That right there is a cylinder that's having an issue. So it's gonna fail the bearing clearance test just because of that. That's too much movement. So let me get through this. Okay, as you can see, this thing, it failed the bearing clearance test, that, that no pass. Uh, once that thing was generated, that was set up to the cloud uh, as well. So Kia knows. They know it didn't pass bearing clearance test. Matter of fact, they don't give us the specs as to what this should be, but when you see it move more than uh, 15, uh, 0.15 increments, then you know it's bad. Um, I've seen it go up to like 0.15 increments and still pass. So I don't know what the spec's supposed to be. They don't tell us, but they know what the spec is. And as a matter of fact, uh, the technical assistance hotline can even look at the spec and they can look at which cylinder was bad. They see all, they see all. So we, we can't, can't get away with anything, right? So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I need to uh, contact um, Kia and I need to uh, open a PWA case on this and um, you know, see what, see what happens, see what they say. Hopefully they say, hey, replace the engine. I mean, because that's what it should be. It, it fell the bearing clearance test. You could see that number three cylinder for sure. That was way too much clearance, you know? So yeah. Uh, I'm a, I'll contact them and I'll see it's late in the day so I'm probably gonna do it tomorrow morning and uh, when it happens I'll let you know uh, this one thing I wanted to show you um, these engines sitting here so these are all engines um, don't, don't mind that one that one's a Mazda um, but these right here these are engines that are waiting to be installed in vehicles right now and the vehicles of course are sitting out outside there and uh, waiting to be installed, waiting for technicians to get to them. At one point in time, we had 22 engines sitting right here. There's 22 engines stacked up waiting to be put into vehicles. And we had another 20 vehicles sitting outside that were waiting to get into the shop just to be diagnosed, just like we just diagnosed this uh, soul right here. And uh, it, was, it was ridiculous and we weren't even that busy compared to, um, you know, what uh, uh, would have heard anyway. And um, they, 
it, it got it got rough and tough, you know, it really did. Uh, not enough personnel to uh, be able to handle all the work that was coming in. Uh, but I will get into, um, I'll contact uh, Kia tomorrow and I will uh, see what they say and I'll let you know. As you can imagine, it's the next day and uh, I did contact Techline, the Kia Techline, this morning, and they got back to me right away, and which is pretty cool because usually it takes a day or two, depending on how busy they are. And uh, just so you know, I mean, this is uh, the case uh, information uh, at, that I had to fill out, and there's a lot of information here that you have to fill out. You have to do a warranty validation, and this uh, vehicle has no warranty, has no. Um, basic coverage and it has no powertrain warranty, although its powertrain warranty expired at 100,000 miles and it's at 107,000 miles right now. Um, I had to fill out uh, information like, um, uh, can I duplicate the complaint? Of course, I surely can. Does the engine run? Yes. Uh, does it exhibit um, misfires, run rough? No. Uh, oil pressure warning light on? No. Uh, under, any other warning lights on? No. Um, has a noise condition? Yes, it does. Uh, aftermarket modifications? No. Uh, what kind of noise condition? Engine rod knock. Um, had to have uh, a scan date, which I did do a scan date, and the uh, ROM ID, which I did uh, do um, have to also attach information like um, the, uh, the ROM ID information that I had to um, get a snapshot from uh, the scanner, uh, the VDN number, I attached that even though they could look at that. I even had to attach the no pass, saying that I did the bearing clearance test and it didn't pass. Uh, I also want to know more information as, um, did it have oil consumption? No. Oil level low. Um, what was the uh, oil color? Was dirty? Um, oil leaking? No. Uh, coolant level normal? Yes. Uh, engine coolant color is green. Um, coolant leakage? No. Signs of overheating? No. Um, it wanted to know uh, because the oil was dirt was low. I had to actually go back and drain the oil that was in it into a graduated bucket showing how much oil was actually in the vehicle and uh, I had to attach that to the case also and I'll, I'll even uh, show you a picture of what that looked like whenever I drained the oil out of there. It uh, definitely had enough oil in it and um, there was a whole lot more information I had to fill out. Um, and uh, Techline got back to me and they said uh, you are authorized to replace this engine um, under the the um, the, re the uh, warranty extension. That's what it is. So this engine is. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and order the engine. It's going to be a long block, and uh, we'll get that engine put in. Okay, guys, the engine is ordered for this thing, and it's probably going to be about a week, a week or so for it to come in and um, then uh, we'll replace the engine. And uh, if y'all wanna uh, see me uh, replace an engine in uh, one of these um, warranty, warranty extension engines, just run on down in the comments and uh, let me know if uh, that's something that you'd like to see. Uh, if you'd like to see more about uh, engines, what's a long block versus a short block. Um, there's a lot of uh, different things that we didn't even touch in this video and I know um, policies and procedures it's, it's a boring subject you know but it's stuff that we have to follow to get um, something like this um, covered under warranty for the customer so the customer is out of warranty um, but we did get the engine covered under uh, the warranty extension so uh, that's good that's a good thing the customer gets a new engine and um, the technician gets to uh, get paid to put the engine in so uh, if you like uh, content like this, uh, please uh, like and please subscribe because uh, there's a lot more to come and I will see you in the next one.